Hello and welcome to the third episode of Senior Living Good News. I'm Terry Sullivan. And I am Brenda Lamone. We are co-founders of agingchoices.com and co-hosts of the podcast series, Aging Choices Unfiltered. This is fun, Brenda. The first two were a lot of fun to do, and now we've got a couple more stories here. One that's a little bit more, um, I guess solemn is the best word to use around Memorial Day, but some great things that kids are doing. But uh, we also have a couple hundred year olds that we're, we're gonna be celebrating today too. Pretty cool. And I got some good news today too. I uh, can actually go visit my mother and she lives in independent living and they've been in lockdown and they have just given us the green light to come visit her. So I'm really excited about that. That's awesome, Brenda. Super happy for you. That's great. Um, and uh, I'm sure she probably needs that by now, you know, with everybody oh, being know. isolated. Must be incredible. Happy birthday! This week, we celebrate two milestone birthdays. First, we say big, a big happy birthday to Helen at Tabor Hills in Naperville, Illinois. Helen recently celebrated her 104th birthday. The community honored her with a drive-by parade complete with signs and balloons. And our other birthday girl is Beth from Connecticut. Beth celebrated her 100th birthday and her granddaughter created a post on Facebook asking for 100 birthday cards for her grandmother's big day. Well, Beth received over 450 cards from well-wishers all across the country. Okay, how long is it gonna take to open up 450 cards? <laughs> <laughs> My hand <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's going to take a while. Well, I actually want to add something. I want to give a big shout out to my aunt, uh, Louise, who lives in Falls Church, Virginia. She is celebrating her 103rd birthday, July 1st. Oh, uh, that's pretty awesome. Is she, she is just doing awesome. Her, she still does the New York Times crossword puzzle with her son. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. So is her mobility really great too? She's still moving around a lot and all pretty that. Good. Yeah, she, yeah, she's pretty good. And uh, she was a nurse in Pearl, at Pearl Harbor. Wow. Really, really wonderful woman. So uh, I, uh, big shout out to her, 103 years old. That is, a, that's an awesome story. Is she living yeah. at home or where does she live? Yeah, she's living at home. Uh, she's my, uh, my father's uh, older sister. Yeah. And uh, yeah, she's she she's living at home and she gets some support, um, but uh, she's doing all right. God bless her. That's awesome. I mean, making it to a hundred—that's fantastic. That's I know. Cool. When we we were all excited about a hundred, now it's like old news. Like oh, hundred and three. Oh, okay. See you next year. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All and right. Driving until she was like ninety-six or something. So okay, she's great. And moving on with our podcast, with our podcast here is our next story has a solemn tone uh, and is the perfect example of a life lesson for a group of middle school band students. That was my son playing taps. He just graduated from eighth grade at Adams Middle School in Guilford, Connecticut. He'll be going on to high school next year and played taps as part of the National Moment of Remembrance on Memorial Day. At 3 p.m. on Memorial Day, musicians from all over the country were encouraged to play taps as part of the National Moment of Remembrance. Uh, we took part in that, Brenda, and I know that their music teacher took part in that, and there was a lot of other kids in the school, and it happened all across the nation. Uh, so it was something pretty cool to do during COVID-19 when people couldn't get together and have their traditional parades, 
and yeah. celebrate that, um, or at least memorialize that is probably a better way to say that. So um, it's, um, it, was, it was a meaningful experience for him. And boy, he can play. Yes, I can. Hear the background when we're, uh, we're on Zoom, I'm like, what is that in the background? Is yeah. it he loves it. He's wanted to do it, I think, ever since he was like six or seven. So yeah, yeah, he's terrific. he's terrific. He's terrific. Yeah. He's got real talent. Our guest this week is Susan Oakley, the band director for Adams Middle School in Guilford, Connecticut. Susan, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you. Um, I can start by saying that both of my sons have been with you uh, in uh, Adams Middle School and they both adore you. If I could say it just, just straight out, uh, Sean actually said to me that he's going to miss you next year when he goes over to the high school. So, so thank you for what you do. Thank you for what you do. Uh, and, thank you. Uh, your passion behind it really shows and I think the kids really picked that up. So thank you. So let's talk about the uh, National Moment of Remembrance and how Adams Middle School became involved. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. So one of the big events of our calendar year, our school year, is um, in a typical year, we participate in the Community Memorial Day Parade. It's a culminating activity. Both 7th and 8th grade bands come together, they march, and we do a big uh, chunk of study on what, is, what does Memorial Day mean? Because for a lot of my students, you know, all they have known thus far is it's a parade, which is fun. Uh, we open our pool, that's great, and we, we barbecue. And so it's an opportunity for us to incorporate into our school curriculum, you know, what is this holiday? Who are we remembering? Why is it important? How is it different from Veterans Day? And so when we found out that as many things have been canceled that we were losing this opportunity, um, I started thinking, what can I do from a distance to still keep a little piece of that going for my students? And so um, one of the projects I had them do is we talked about the service songs for all the branches of the military. So I, I gave them some sheet music. A friend of mine had transcribed all the melodies. So I gave them the sheet music. And then I found out about the, um, the national moment being uh, used as well for TAPS Across America. And that was done by TAPS for Veterans, which is a, a nonprofit that provides performances for um, service folk who have passed away. And uh, I was reading about it and I actually, I started reading about it for my own personal benefit. Um, my dad's a trumpet player. I play French horn and clarinet. And I'm like, oh, this is a nice thing I can do in my town where we also had the parade canceled. And then I thought, why don't I take this a step further and just offer it out to my students saying, this is an opportunity, whether you take it or not, like I'm not really going to know unless you want to share it. But this yeah. is a great way you can give back. It'll take like a minute of your time. But for someone who's hearing this, this could make that day for them. Like we all lost something without that day. So that's, that's the backstory, I guess, of where this came from. That's great. Did you have that many uh, students participate in it? Um, in the TAPS part, yeah. I think maybe between a half dozen and a dozen. I don't know. So I'm sure some of them did that and didn't share it with me. Um, I know I got some pictures and some videos like from Sean. Um, but I think there's other kids who just sort of took it in and did something on their own. Um, and that was sort of the point of it is, you know, it, for me, it was a very personal thing. I went out my driveway and I played, you know, and the neighbors sort of stopped and listened. And that's what it was about for me. So I hope that there are students that ran with it that maybe I won't know about. But um, I know I got a couple of recordings of taps. I also got all five service songs plus some patriotic songs that I am putting together in a video that I'm going to share out with our local retirement communities. Um, I hope to get it done by Memorial Day and unfortunately technology has not helped me move quickly but um, I'm in the editing processes and I figure even in June it's something to say hey we're thinking about you. We remember those veterans who are you know elderly at this point and we just want to share a little bit of our music with you because it's what we have to share. Do you have any particular connections to any retirement communities in the local area or senior living that you know someone that's lived there or is just something that's a passion of yours? Um, well, I think 
I know that my grandmother, um, she was in a rehabilitation facility. Um, she's out now, but um, she had spent some time there. And I think just visiting her as she was healing was pretty powerful for me and my kids. Like it, it was an eye opener. Um, my grandfather, who was a veteran um, years ago, was in the Mary Wade home in New Haven. Um, wow. But I think more, more importantly, um, there are communities right in Guilford that I feel it's really important to have those intergenerational connections. And again, I, I don't necessarily have the ways to do this on a continuing basis, but at least I can connect my students with those people that are right from Guilford, you know, Guilford to Guilford. And it seems like a very authentic way, again, to do my part to give back something, well, um, you that. know, especially you. With, co with COVID, like we can't get people in. So why can't we get a video? And we've got the tech to do that. So it's, it's my small piece. <laughs> no, I think it's fantastic. I mean, isolation for everyone is um, in the social distancing and quarantine. They're already quarantined in some way, shape, or form. Uh, so this has even made it worse when people can't come and visit them. So anything that we can do to help them is really, really important. So thank you for doing that. I really appreciate that. So um, for the students themselves, I think the intergenerational connection, which you talked about, is in getting them involved. Do you think the students understood that connection and the need for that connection? I, I want to be hopeful and say yes, they totally understood. Um, <laughs> I think I think with the age group I teach, um, middle schoolers are incredible for a lot of reasons, but um, one of the things that's hard for them is because of where they are developmentally, like it's hard for them to see outside their own world and that's I don't fault them for that, but I think one of the things, again, I love about the community live events is they see it. And um, I don't know, I think um, with what we're dealing with now with COVID, it gives me the opportunity to think about what are ways that we can have that visibility show up for my students if we're, if we're away again. Um, I've also, you know, I've been talking with, um, oh, it's not the Gables anymore. I don't remember what their new name is, maybe Solstice Living, and it turns out a, thing, yeah. Solstice okay, Living, yeah. um, a, a former band parent, her kids all went through my program. She's like, oh my goodness, it's so nice to connect. We're looking for ways to get students in, you know, when it's safe to do so. And so I'm like, oh my goodness, this is a wonderful connection. So I think um, looking forward, maybe there's opportunities um, to think about getting, especially students who are interested, connected as a way to sort of open that door when we can live time. Um, so I know I've been home thinking about that and thinking just about, you know, I've watched what my parents have been going through being isolated. I've watched it, what my grandmother is going through who, um, you know, she has some memory issues now and it is really hard. Like we can't hug her and she's heartbroken. And how do you explain that to someone who's not remembering why? Um, and so I think coming out of this, it sort of has fueled a little bit of a fire in me to how can I connect these students to meaningful experiences with folks who they might not otherwise see, or maybe they don't have a connection to older people in their family. How can I connect them to people who are living five minutes away and help, help everyone? Yeah, and music connects at no matter what, you know, even yep. when you do have dementia, right? It brings that emotion, it, it, it connects with people. Well, boy, wouldn't it be great if there's an actual movement around uh, middle schools across the country engaging with local retirement communities. That would be amazing. What do you think the students come away with this with in, in, in general? Just to kind of wrap it up and is there anything else that you'd like to share uh, with our listeners? Well, I think from this particular project, I hope, um, I guess one of my music education goals was that they had those melodies, that they could play those melodies on their instrument. You know, can you play My Country Tis of Thee? Can you play Yankee Doodle? Can you learn the service songs? Um, I do a unit with my eighth grade band uh, for Veterans Day where we review the service songs and talk about the branches of the military and what military music means. Um, so I guess curricularly that was my, that's my hope. But um, I guess my hope is just for them to be aware that it doesn't take very much to have a really positive impact on someone's day, especially um, people who are lonely, you know, it, they might think, oh, well, this performance wasn't the best. I'm not a professional musician. It, that doesn't matter, you know? It's just that you wanna share from your heart something. Take two minutes and it's such a gift to so many people. So I hope, I hope from um, this distance learning experience that they can see that they have that power and that gift because I feel like so many times young people 
feel like they don't have a voice and what they do doesn't matter. And it absolutely matters. And it matters to people that really need, need our love and care and support. I don't know, that might be kind of big. Who knows if they actually took that away. But I think um, the more I can encourage them to see their worth and value through music, um, if that's what their connection is, and that's great. And um, my hope is that we can continue to use um, some of the digital resources that we're really, we've been forced into um, to, to see if we can build these connections so that you know, we don't have people, whether they're young or old, feeling like they're isolated or, you know, I'm thinking my young people, like questioning their worth, um, you know, that we can give voice to people who need it the most. Um, and my, my, my medium's music, so if I can do it through that, even if it's just a little kernel, that's, that's what I'd like to do. Well said. Uh, every time I ask that question, is there anything like to share or, you know, expand upon, I always get chills. You know, because that, it, because it is, that comes from a place of passion, you know, and we just did a podcast with, um, on senior isolation this week. Um, and I think that will be one of the biggest things that comes out of this pandemic is beyond, was already an issue, um, is even worse of an issue. So I think any, and, and we all have a responsibility, each one of us to figure out how we can give back. So thank you for what you do. Um, keep doing it. And uh, thanks for joining me today and telling me about the, the whole experience. I really appreciate it. Well, thanks for asking. It's great to be able to share what my students do. I hope this story put a smile on your face. Now it's your turn. We want to hear from you. How are you making a positive impact in your senior communities? Share your photos and videos with us to be included in the next episode of Senior Living Good News. Just tag us on social media, Aging Choices on Facebook and Instagram, and My Aging Choices on Twitter. Thank you for watching.